who are the most notable actors that she has trained and that have used the Ivana Chubak method? <laughs> Number one, Beyonce. <laughs> Thespians, welcome to another episode of Chasing um, Acting. The series is all about my journey pursuing acting in South Africa. And everything that I share, I share it with you because I'm the type of person, you know what I'm saying? So if you are interested in acting and want to pursue this, just don't know where to go, where to start, what to do, like it's just overwhelming because a lot of the times we need to speak about this. A lot of the times, People that are more established in this industry tend to, um, not everybody of course, but they tend to like not fill us in, like where do we go, where do we start? They'll be like, find an agency, but which agency, you know? And then you find yourself um, applying for agencies, but getting rejected by agencies. So we are going to... You know what, we're going to navigate through this industry together. And as you know, um, one of the things that I did talk about in my first video about um, pursuing an acting career in South Africa is that you need to get training. So the past two um, episodes, I was talking about where you can get training and the importance of getting training. It is important because it allows you and introduces you to different acting methods that we are going to explore today and next week um, that can help you to get into character. We spoke about how acting is more than just saying lines. It's about character analysis, understanding what your character wants from the other character, um, understanding how to react appropriately to the different situations. So how do you get there? Before we get into today's video, I just want to say that um, if you want to acquaint yourself with different acting methods, try to like if you want to read about different acting methods and start today please use the links in my description box which will lead you to an amazon ebooks or a hard copy that you can um, order i do suggest that you get an ebook so that you can start reading today but please do make sure that you use the link to order use the link in my description box to go and order those books so today we're specifically going to be talking about ivana chubak method which is the method that i have been using i've been trained to use it you can get the ivana chubak book by using the link in the description box once again um just make sure that you do get the ebook um, if you're not into ebook or you haven't done ebook before make sure that you do download the kindle app and then after purchasing your book on amazon it will appear on your Kindle. So I do recommend that you do that so that you can start today. So Ivana Chubak, let's just first get into the history of who Ivana Chubak is. So Ivana Chubak is an American acting coach who leads a drama school in Los Angeles and hosts a series of acting workshops across the world, around the world. And the book has been translated into 18 no oh my gosh 18 different languages all right she originally worked as an actress before becoming an acting coach and who are the most notable actors that she has trained and that have used the ivana chubak method <laughs> number one beyonce okay she has trained and coached beyonce and beyonce has also used her acting method Haley berry has also been trained by ivana chubak Tasha Smith, Jessica Alba, Garrett Butler, Jim Carrey, Matthew Perry, Brad Pitt, Rob Poole, and many, 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 many more, okay? South African actors that also incorporate this method into their acting include Paul Tusi and Palance Glada. So make sure that you do get yourself a copy of The Power of the Actor. And what exactly is inside The Power of the Actor? I suggest that you get a pen, a notepad or something so that we can analyze some of the acting methods and tools that she has placed in her book that allows you to get into character and play to the best of your ability. So let's get started. All right, so this is a 12-step technique, and I'm just going to quickly run through what they are, and then we're going to give a breakdown of each method. So number one is overall objective. 
Number two, scene objective. Number three, obstacles. Number four, substitution. Number five, inner objects. Number six, beats and actions. Number seven, moment before. Number eight, place. Number nine, doings. Number 10, inner monologue. 11, previous circumstances. Number 12, let it go. All right, so now I'm just going to give a brief back, like description of what each method, what each principle actually stands for. So before you get into, um, you know, start playing a role, you're going to get your script, right? So you're first going to get your script and um, you're going to go through these principles like you're going to tick them off as you are analyzing your script, right? Whether you are doing um, a dialogue, something that's a scene between two or three people or more, or you are doing a mono. It's essential that you do go through these 12 steps individual. Make sure that you are editing, you're going back to them, and you're using them to get the emotions that you're going to need for that role, okay? So the first one you need to look at is the overall objective of your character, the character that you are playing, right? And you're going to look at um, the script in its entirety, right? And look at the journey that that character is taking in that role throughout the entire uh, movie or drama, whatever you're doing, whether it's theater, like TV, whatever you're doing, this applies to all, right? So the overall objective is what your character is looking to achieve. As an individual, as a person living in this world, we all have our own goals. Right now, my goal is to be an actor, right? To get an acting role. That is my goal, right? Your goal might be to find love, to find a job, to get emotional security, to get financial security. So those are personal goals that we as people, we have. So the same should apply with the character that you're playing. What goal are they trying to achieve in life? Your goal allows the character to have these emotions like, damn, I want to pursue this. So that kind of like, you know, influences the type of energy and emotions that you're going to portray in front of the screen, right? Just to show how determined you are. Like, listen, I want this. You know, and that influences how you're going to act, right? So it is used as a tool to provide the passion to overcome the conflict in the script, right? If something is going to get into your way, what are you going to do as a person who's trying to be an actor, right? This is like the foundation of the 12 principles because everything should align with the overall objective, should feed into this overall objective. Please make sure that you read more about these principles in the book, right? Number two is scene objective. Scene objective is um, what you want from the other person or the other people in your scene. This is something that creates a lot of power in a scene. When we see people like going back and forth in a scene where like this person wants to have this this um let's say for example i'm just gonna come up with this from the top of my head let's say there's a scene between a mother and a daughter right um right i'm just making this up it's not a real movie this daughter she wants to pursue acting right <laughs> sound familiar this daughter she wants to pursue acting but the mom has invested in a lot of education a lot in towards her education for her to become a doctor right and she decides that she doesn't want to become a doctor so they're in an argument where this girl is trying to tell to get the mother to see that she wants to pursue acting and it's her passion right so she's going to be like listen this is what i want to do you must listen to me or whatever so in that scene her objective is to get this lady to get the mom to understand that acting is what she wants but the but the mom her objective is to get her child to get into you know to get her to pursue to pursue medicine because that is what she paid for her to do so we're going to see that back and forth conflict and even you as the audience member you're going to be like ah, 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 ah. 
who's gonna win who's gonna win and that creates excitement for the audience that creates that vibe you know for the audience to actually want to and like that is what creates a beautiful story you don't want it to just be one-sided right um so a scene objective is what you as the actor in that what you as that character that the one who's playing i guess what do you want from the other person and most of the time scene objective is selfish right so um it could be to get somebody to love me to get you to love me to get to give you to get you to give me hope so you are you want them you want to get them to do that and what drives people to get them into doing something that you want like the way you say things your emotions that is and that is what plays out in the character that we as the audience see you know you trying to get this person to do something if you as a lover are trying to get um a man in that scene to get you to love you what kind of emotions how are you going to play that character how are you going to portray yourself obviously you're going to be soft you're going to be like you know hey babe you know you see you see that changes everything the fact that i am like i want you to get you to love me you know gabo pushing the hair back gabo speaking very soft you know that and if you if you're trying to get that man to get away from you it's hey get away from me versus um if you want him to if you have the same line but your scene objective is to get him to love you. It's like, mm, get away from me. Oh. <laughs> that is different, right? So um, you need to understand your scene objective. What exactly do you want from the other character? And that can be established through reading the entire script. Number three is obstacles. This creates the fun dynamics for the audience to watch. Just like we as people, we experience obstacles in our lives that, that kind of like prevent us or like sets us back um, and it comes into the way of us realizing our dreams. So does an, a character in a movie, they also go through obstacles that they encounter, right? Winning is only satisfying to the viewer when there is a possibility of failure. They wanna know, oh, yo, is he gonna get the girl? Or, oh my gosh, he must, that creates excitement in the audience, right? And um, those can these obstacles can be mental, physical, or emotional. Next one that we're going to go into is substitution. This is one of my favorite ones, okay? Like, of course, when I do character analysis and before I play a role, I go through all of them, but substitution is, is, is the best one for me. So what substitution basically is, is that you take someone in your life, right? Let's say, for example, your overall objective is, um, remember, number one is overall objective. Your overall objective is to, to, to get love, right? I want to be loved. And let's say that your scene objective is um, there's this man um, who you're trying to get their attention and affection from. And then, um, but that's the actor. That's the character that you're playing with in that scene. So, and the person that you're seeing there is somebody that you've probably never even seen in your life, you know? Um, the actual person who's playing that role. So what you're going to do is you, in order for you, and you're probably not even attracted to that person. So what you're going to do is that you're going to take someone out of your life that you want love from. What is great about this is that you don't have to actually get that specific kind of person. Like, you don't have to get a man in your life. You don't have to look for a man in your real life um, that you want love from. You can, you can pick anybody. Like, it can be your parents. So let's say you want a relationship. You want a man in your life. You want this man to love you, right? So what you are going to do is... You're going to take someone in your real life that you want love from. It can be your dad, your mom, your aunt, your sisters, or it can be that romantic love interest, right? So you're going to take those emotions and those feelings and you're going to put them in that scene, in that role, right? And that is going to influence how you feel towards this person and how you're going to behave around that person. And like similarly, let's say in um, in a scene, uh, you are dealing with grief, right? 
you're talking or thinking about someone that has passed away and let's say in that scene the person who has passed away is um let's say your sister passed away but you don't even have a sister or you've never had your sister pass away you can use any other person that in your life that you were close to either leave you okay that that the pain of feeling that void um that emptiness or passing away use those emotions that you felt during that time and use it in the scene and, and these are one of the reasons why i find acting so powerful because it's so therapeutic um you can you can use acting to heal from your own personal uh, traumas and things that you encounter on a daily basis right and sometimes as actors um what we do which is a little bit dangerous is when we're going through certain things in our lives at that time i've heard of stories where um people even broke up with actors is because they don't want to feel right so basically what they do is they capture those emotions and feelings that they are feeling whenever they're going through something and then whenever they're playing a certain role that's when they release it i'm not sure how to feel about that but you can always go back into your emotional memory and try to relive the emotions that you felt um it's important to still feel in the moment so that you can heal but then like you can always you know recall how you felt um if you need those emotions for a specific character or role that you're going to be playing i hope we're on the same page if you're finding this information valuable please don't forget to click that subscribe button and like button okay all right so let's go into inner objects so inner objects are the mental pictures in your head that you see when talking or hearing about a person place thing or event okay these images can also be based on your substitution so basically what it means is that let example from the top of my head okay there was actually one of a scene a scene that i was playing a acting class of mine um where i was um i was in prison it's actually a movie um where i was playing the character of angelina jolie i'll write down the movie uh in the video i forgot what the name of uh of the movie was but um i was playing the character of angelina jolie and she, this is a part where she was uh put into a mental institution like wrongfully accused and um she was just in this place where she is surrounded by people that were you know admitted and like basically going crazy so she was obviously she was feeling uncomfortable so in that moment one of the inner objects that i had in mind was uh, like um like a, a container being in a container like how uncomfortable being in a, like a a small container house is especially when it's hot you know it's uncomfortable it makes me feel unsafe so um i had to appropriate though so that those were the inner objects that were going into my mind you know being in a container being in a confined space claustrophobic you know um being restricted or um you know so not having much to say or much to do um so i had to appropriate those feelings of how i feel the inner object what i see in my mind i see a container i see a confined space i see claustrophobic i feel claustrophobic those feelings and thoughts when i think of that image of being in a container and take those those and put it in um that scene where i'm in a mental institution of course i've never been to a mental institution but i had to play as if i'm in a mental institution so that made me feel uncomfortable i started to like you know feel uneasy you know because of what i was thinking in my mind so inner objects are also very powerful in bringing in the emotions that you need towards a character beats and actions beats are the different chunks of a scene in which a character pursues a particular tactic in order to achieve your scene objective right so beats and actions kind of like go together okay so a beat is you're going to get your script right and um let's say they give you a line like i love you all right so let's say you want love from this character and then you have the lines i love you let's say that this some this person is someone that you are afraid of losing in your life and you're afraid that if you expose your feelings to them you will lose them so let's say that um uh you want to tell them that you love them and then you're scared 
see an objective is I want this person to get to love me, to get him to love me. All right. So what you would do on a script is that you will write down brackets, all right, to where you're going to take a beat. So the words I love you, let's take the words I love you, for example, something very basic, something very small. My first beat would be, I, I love you. I love you. This is someone that you're afraid to confess your feelings towards, right? I, first beat, I love you. Okay? You want this person to get to love you. And the action here is how you act in that moment to deliver those beats and those lines. I'm very calm, very very serious want this person to take me seriously because this is what i want right but if your scene objective is different right you know you don't really want love from this person you can easily deliver that line like i love you or whatever like uh, in accordance to your scene objective i love you so you don't have to place beats where it's 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 not appropriate right and because i'm not really looking for love in this person i'm just saying it because i have to probably i, I just have to say it in this is scene um, I love you. Okay? Or maybe I just, to, to get this person to get away from me, but, um, you know, I can't really lose them. That's my scene objective. Okay? Let's say to get this person to get away from me. And this person is annoying me. I'll just say, I love you. Okay? My action is just, you know? So that was the beat and action. And there was no actual beat there. It's like, I love you. I just set the line without placing any beats. So based on your scene objective, and what you want from the other person that will help you to put beats in different places but be careful that you put beats using a pencil because sometimes a director or when you are going through those lines you might find beats at different places so you might have to move those brackets into different other places all right let's go to number seven moment before so moment before is basically what happens before that scene right so that that allows you to get into that scene with the appropriate energy and the emotion. If you are playing just a scene um, or like you're just doing a self tape uh, where you just get a you just get lines but you don't know what happened before, create yourself that for yourself. Okay? So that when you get into the scene, you already have that history with that other person or you have that history doing something else. So for example, um, I had to audition for a role a couple of days ago um, where this girl, so I just got the script of this girl. She was approached by her boyfriend and um, the boyfriend um, the boyfriend came to apologize to her, right? And um, she was angry that, where have you been before? And um, I've been trying to call you for three weeks, and but here you come. But anyway, I forgive you. Um, because we have had a great um, moments together um, just get into the front door come inside right so what I did was that I put in the moment before for myself what happened before that because that was the only part that was shot so in my mind what happened before is that I have been worried sick about this man who has been gone for three weeks guys you know how frustrating it is to have someone that you really love vanish you know so obviously now you see even in the way i'm describing this moment before to for you um i'm getting aggravated man i'm getting the emotions charged so that when i see that person all of those emotions are already there you know so um that is what the moment before actually essentially does is that it gets you emotionally charged for the scene that you are about to play if you don't have a, a moment before on your script um create your own you know based on the dialogue that you're given or based on the lines that you're given create yourself a moment before because that it's wonderful to see that journey like you transitioning into that journey all right so let me explain this a little bit further so basically moment before is the scene or what happened just before the scene you're playing right so in the example that i gave you my boyfriend in the scene came to me after having had gone missing for three weeks so before he came i was just sitting minding my business right and i even started to even forget about him because i've been calling and he hasn't been answering 
and um, I'm not even thinking about him anymore, right? So before he came knocking at my door, it had been three weeks since I last saw him. So when he when the scene starts, I would automatically be shocked to see him like, where has this person been? Because, wow, like, wow, all right? I'll be surprised, I'll be annoyed. And basically taking into account what was happening just right before the scene you're playing is what is your moment before. Number eight is place and fourth wall. Okay, so remember that the fourth wall is this wall, um, depending on the genre of the movie or the film that you're playing, um, it's you cannot break the fourth wall, okay? So as an actor going on to set, you cannot look at the camera because that will break the fourth wall and that will make the audience feel uneasy, like it'll be so creepy, okay? <laughs> it'll be like peeping into like a universe and they see us as ghosts. But anyway, um, place and fourth wall is where exactly is the scene taking place, understanding where it's taking place. And that will determine how you speak, how you act, and how you portray yourself. So, for example, if your scene is taking place um, at a park, right? For example, um, your scene is taking place at a park, and let's say you are fighting, you're having an argument with this person, right? Or you are a top secret agent, um, and you have to give information to uh, the other person, um, and you're in a park. When you're giving top secret information, you wouldn't be like, yeah, so I need to tell you that at station 19, at 1900, where we are going to run an investigation on the atomic bomb, you are not going to do that out loud, okay? That's weird. Especially in a park, you will freak out the people. So what you would do, because of knowing your place, your surrounding, your environment, you'd be like, okay, so at 1900, um, make sure that you meet me at Times Square at this location, at this time, uh, we are going to plant the atomic bomb. I'm not a terrorist, by the way. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just giving an example. I'm not a terrorist, okay? Um, so, um, depending on the place where you are going to be, where you are, where you are in that film, in the shoot, um, that will determine um, how you're going to speak, okay? Doings refer to the handling of props to produce behavior, all right? Uh, doings are essential. They create a sense of unpredictability so a saying here says there is a quote here that says words can lie behavior always tells the truth so let's take for example right i have this pen doing this something that you're doing to show the emotions that you're feeling so let's say you are oh i'm getting hot let's say that um you are going to write um let's say that you're going to write a test right and um somebody asks you are you nervous and then you're like no i'm not nervous no i'm not nervous what about my action what about my doing suggests that i am nervous the fact that i am clicking i'm clicking all right or this are you nervous no i'm ready for this i'm ready for this what am i doing what am i doing that's suggesting that um i am actually nervous so i'm doing other things that you do um that you know that just tells us the real emotion of and these are things that as as human beings that we actually do do um when we are feeling a tap away in a monologue is the monologue so monologue is like just the word like monologue is a dialogue with yourself mono means one um mono is a like a conversation between like yourself yourself between you and you all right so mono means one so that means it's something that sometimes you perform monologues uh, but in a monologue is something that happens in your head right what you're thinking in your head and this is fascinating because this is true in reality um in reality uh we have things that we are thinking in our minds that other people will never know okay but sometimes your eyes can give it away um Sometimes your eyes can give it away. I'm trying to think of an example. I'm just gonna, like, this is just a, it's an example that I just came up from the top of my head. So let's say you are um, ordering a, a, a vegan salad. Is there a vegan salad? Like, I don't know, a vegan salad, like a salad with just vegetables 
and uh, you're ordering a vegan, like you can already see what's going on in my mind, right? What's going on in my mind? Um, I'm ordering a vegan salad um, and I want um, kiwi, uh, spinach. You can already tell what's going on in my mind, right? Just by just mentioning what my example is going to be. What's going on in my mind? Damn, hell no. <laughs> that inner monologue is, I would never order something like that. And where is that all happening? In my eyes. You can see that in my eyes. So inner monologue has that power to um, further to further accentuate, um, accentuate your, your message and bring it across. So uh, inner monologue is very powerful because without inner monologue, your um your 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 what you're saying can can become dead, right? So let's say without the inner monologue, I don't know how I'm gonna achieve this without thinking about something, but let me try. Um, I want a kiwi salad with um with kale and um spinach and broccoli, okay? Whereas it there's not much emotion there there is some but there's not much but if you like well, i want i want a spinach i want a spinach um smoothie with some kale and broccoli all right so i want you all to guess the inner monologue for this and put it in the comment section below I want to see what you think. <laughs> a lot is going on. And that is my inner monologue. Okay, so let's go to previous circumstances. So previous circumstances are the character's history that makes them who they are today. All right? So it is the accumulation of past events that has led them to this current moment. So basically, uh, an accumulation of things of the past that uh, that caused you to be that way okay so if you were let's say for example neglected by your parents um how are you going to act as an adult um are you going to be needy are you going to be so those are the type of things that are important in understanding the character that you're playing that what are the things that in my past that influenced the way i behave today was i rejected was i abandoned was i abused um you know it, it doesn't have to just be those negative stuff. It can also be positives. But um, what are those things that contribute into how I behave and act today? And the last one is let it go, okay? Stay open, stay open, take risks, and work hard. You have already come this far from step one to step 11, right? Allow yourself to go through those feelings and emotions trust yourself like trust the work that you have done try to think of all the choices you've made remember your objectives remember what you're trying to get out of that scene okay whoa this is probably the longest video i've ever had so far but i do hope that you learn a thing or two please make sure that you go on to amazon using the links in my description box um that would be uh very much appreciated i do suggest that you do get the soft copy of the ivana chuak book from amazon today using the link in my description box and um, start reading and understanding what i love about the book is that it also gives um it also gives um examples of where like if you need to understand clearly go watch this movie you know and it will elaborate um some of the things that uh the characters had to go through in order for you to understand where where ivana chubak is trying to get at with her point in her books thank you so much for joining in in my next episode we're going to be talking about other methods that you can learn and um if you want to get a head start make sure that you check out the other books um such as maizna the method teaching that i also put in my description box and that you can use the link to go and get yourself a copy on amazon thank you so much for tuning in i will see you on my next video but it's bye for now most of the time scene objective is selfish is selfish uh, i don't know shut down the whatever and um